Rista, goddess of healing is given an S-class difficulty level world. To become one of the great goddesses, she is required to save this world from the demon king. But because the difficulty level is very high she is devastated. Without any delay, she starts searching for the best human, who can help her defeat the demon king. However, even after going through multiple candidates, Rista isn't able to find a single human with enough stats. In frustration, she throws the papers. One of the papers falls onto her face. The moment Rista looks at the candidate's stats, she is amazed to see how high they are for a level 1 hero. She immediately performs the summoning ritual and summons the human named Seiya. After a few seconds, Seiya arrives. Rista looks at him and is blushing to see how handsome he is. She desperately wants to make out with him, but soon realizes love between a human and a god is forbidden. After gaining her composure, she explains to Seiya the reason he has been summoned. Seiya with a suspicious tone asks Rista the reason she is not saving the world herself despite being a god. Rista with a calm tone explains that a world is created by gods for humans, and it's their duty to save the world. There are still a lot of things to explain, so Rista opens a portal to the world they have to save and tells Seiya to come with her. There she will explain everything to him. But to her surprise, Seiya refuses to come. Even if it's a goddess herself telling him to come, he will not go anywhere suspicious. Rista realizes Seiya must be scared. So she tries her best to tell him his stats are way higher than average heroes. And with her being the goddess of healing, he doesn't have to worry about dying. But again, Seiya declines her offer. He cannot trust a goddess who is going to be a supporting character. He even doubts whether Rista would even be able to heal his small wounds. Rista is furious. She can't believe how a human can speak to a goddess in such a rude tone. Seiya has a condition if she wants him to come to another world. As Seiya takes off his t-shirt, Rista misinterprets the condition for the forbidden love. And she is blushing just upon thinking about it. But to her surprise, Seiya starts doing push-ups. Before he goes to any dangerous place, Seiya needs some time to level up. Seeing something strange about Seiya's personality, Rista again looks at his candidate sheet. In it, she finds that Seiya's personality is impossibly cautious. There's nothing she can do now, so until Seiya levels up, she tries helping him by bringing some rice balls to eat. But Seiya suspects there might be poison in it, so he tells Rista to first eat herself and check for him. Rista starts crying. She tells Seiya that she doesn't have any reason to poison him, but eat it anyways to prove him. And to make sure he has everything necessary, Rista provides Seiya with basic amenities. And a buzzer, which when pressed will notify her that he is ready to go. Thinking he would press the buzzer in two to three days, Rista wait patiently. But even after seven days, the buzzer isn't pressed. Rista starts to lose herself, but just then the buzzer finally rings. She immediately goes to his room. On seeing Seiya's ripped body, her nose starts to bleed. She wipes off the blood and checks Seiya's stats. Rista is in shock to see just by doing push-ups Seiya's level has risen to level 15. Without any more delay, she quickly opens the portal to Gabranda. This time Seiya is ready, as he says his catchphrase. Ready perfectly. After they arrive, they go to the nearest town, Idona to buy some weapons. Rista hands gold coins to Seiya for the weapons and other equipment. Seiya enters the weapon shop and selects steel armor, and asks for three sets. Rista immediately stops him, telling him he doesn't need this many. Seiya explains that the first is to wear, the second is spare, and the third is a spare in case the first spare loses. Rista took the coins back and select the armor herself. From there, they go to buy herbs. And this time also, Seiya ends up buying 50 of them. After the reckless purchase, they go to an open field to improve Seiya's level and skills further. There they found a slime. With them the weakest, Rista tells him he doesn't need to fear getting any damage. Seiya ignoring what she said, uses Atomic Split Slash. With just one strike Seiya mercilessly vaporizes the innocent slime who had the potential to become a demon lord. Rista tries her best to make Seiya understand he doesn't need to use such a powerful attack against the slime. But Seiya again ignores what she said. Thinking the slime might still be alive, 
He uses another skill, Hell's Fire. He uses the skill multiple times until there isn't even a molecule remaining. Finally, when Seiya is done with it, Rista suggests going to the next town to face stronger monsters. But just then, one of the four heavenly kings of Demon Lord's force, Chaos Machina arrives. Rista is in shock. She didn't expect to have an encounter with a high-level demon this early. She scans Chaos's stats and finds out she is level 66. Because there is no chance for Seiya to beat her, she tells him to retreat immediately. But she soon realizes Seiya had already left. In anger, she runs after him saying how can he leave a beautiful goddess like her behind. Rista quickly opens the portal, but as she is about to be caught by Chaos, Seiya uses Hell's fire to stop her. After they arrive, Seiya holds Rista's face. Rista starts blushing upon thinking they are finally going to make forbidden love. But Seiya just throws her away. He tells her to get out as he needs some more time to level up. Two days later, Seiya is still training, so Rista looks in the crystal ball to check the situation in Edona. There she sees Chaos has already killed many people. And threatening the hero and the goddess to come quickly or else more people will die. Rista is in worry. She goes and tells the situation to Seiya. But no matter what she says, Seiya still needs more time to level up. Even though, in the Divine Realm, the time flows 100 times slower, they still need to hurry. Seiya is not willing to listen and tells Rista to leave him alone. Rista is emotional to see the deaths of humans. She tells Seiya that choosing him as the hero is the biggest mistake she has made in her life. As she is about to leave the room, Seiya while wearing his armor, tells Rista that it's not like he doesn't care about those people, it's just that if he dies then every single human in Gabranda will die. He prefers logic rather than using emotions. Rista checks his stats and is amazed to see how much he has leveled up in such a short amount of time. As Seiya says his catchphrase, ready perfectly, both of them teleport to Gabranda. Just before Chaos kill another human, in the nick of time Seiya arrives and uses his new skill, Windblade to save the human. Chaos scans Seiya's stats and is amazed to see how much Seiya has leveled since their last encounter. But she isn't scared, because she has a skill up to her sleeve. Chaos transforms into her true form. And now, her stats are three times more than Seiya's. Rista is freaking out to see how strong Chaos is. As of her current stats, she is stronger than the Demon King of a D-Class world. With incredible strength, Chaos uses her attack on Seiya. Rista closes her eyes because she has accepted Seiya's death. As the dust clears up, Seiya is still standing unharmed. Rista is in disbelief. She cannot understand how a level 21 hero is able to withstand a demon with way higher stats. She checks Seiya's stats again and finds he is using fake skill to hide his real stats. She uses her godly powers to see past the fake skill, and when she got to know his real stats, Rista's jaw just drops. Seiya's stats are ten times more than earlier. She wonders how Seiya managed to level up this much in such a short amount of time. But then she realizes Seiya from the start was hiding his real stats. Meaning, when they first encountered Chaos, Seiya's stats were already enough to beat her. With Seiya's real power, he uses Phoenix Drive and turns Chaos into ashes with ease. Everyone in the town is very happy and thanks Seiya for his heroic achievement. Seiya ignoring their praise starts collecting Chaos's ashes and uses his skill, Maximum Inferno on them. The power is so high, that the whole town ends up getting burned. The village mayor begs Seiya to leave the town as he cannot afford any more damage. As they are about to leave for the next town, Seiya stops Rista. He believes after he defeated one of the four heavenly kings, there is a high chance he would soon have to face another one. So before that happens he wants to level up more. With no other choice, Rista opens the portal to the divine realm, and they go there. While Seiya is working out, Rista is with Arya, who is one of the great goddesses. Rista admires her because Arya has saved 300 worlds. But with a sad look, Arya reveals that out of those 300, there was one she wasn't able to save despite it being only a level B world. Just then, Seiya enters the room. As soon as Arya sees Seiya she drops her cup. She went to him and introduces herself. 
Rista starts to get jealous to see Arya is also captivated by Seiya's handsome face. Arya asks Seiya the reason he has come here. Seiya is having difficulty improving his level. No matter how much he work out, his level is barely moving up. On hearing this, Rista is happy and suggests that they should go to Gabranda to fight monsters. But Seiya finds it a risky option and asks for another suggestion. Arya suggests Seiya to train with Circeus, who is the god of Divine Blade. With his incredible sword skills, Arya believes Seiya would make a huge improvement. Seiya likes the idea. They go to Circeus to ask him about the training. Circeus accepts to train but beforehand warns Seiya that for a human the training will not at all be easy. Seiya in reply tells Circeus to not leave the training in the middle when he will make him cry. Circeus is offended to hear it from a human. He is furious and decides to show Seiya the levels and training. And with it, the training begins. After the first day, Rista goes to Circeus to ask for an update. Circeus shares that Seiya has potential but he is still far behind in strength. After the second day, Circeus tells that Seiya has gained a nice amount of power but if he uses his actual power against Seiya, then Seiya is no match. After the third day, when Rista again goes to Circeus, she finds him sitting in a corner. She asks about the training. Circeus with a tired look shares that the progress is remarkable and that there is nothing to worry about. After the fourth day, Rista is planning to make rice balls and is looking for an ingredient known as nori. But unexpectedly she finds Circeus hiding there. Circeus has a scary look, he begs Rista to keep her voice low so Seiya doesn't find him. He shares that Seiya is already three times stronger than him, but still won't let him rest until he becomes 100 times stronger. And because of it, they have been training non-stop without any breaks. He begs her to save him from the maniac. But just then Seiya comes and finds Circeus. Circeus is so traumatized that he throws his divine blade into the ocean and swear to give up on sword fighting. But despite it, Seiya drags him to the training. Rista is called up by Ishtar, who is the highest ranked goddess. After using her precognition ability, Ishtar finds out that in the next town, Rista and Seiya will find two allies who will help her and Seiya on the journey. But because a huge calamity is upon the town she tells Rista to leave immediately. Rista meets up with Seiya and explains the situation. Seiya has leveled up enough and says his catchphrase. Ready perfectly. They arrive at the town of Simul. But notices people are leaving. She asks them the reason and one of them shares that the main castle has been destroyed by the huge horde of undead. And because this town is near the castle, the horde is heading this way. Seiya asks Rista what are the weaknesses of the undead. And after knowing it's fire and holy water, he goes to the nearest shop and orders 1,000 bottles of holy water. But after Rista stopped him, Seiya is forced to buy only 10 of them. They arrive at the church where they are introduced to Mash and Ilyalu who are the descendants of dragons and from now on they will accompany Seiya. Before the priest says anything else, Seiya uses the holy water on him. Rista is in shock. She is furious to see how rude Seiya is, but soon the priest starts to turn into an undead. And without any delay, Seiya quickly cuts him into pieces. Seiya was so quick that Rista is wondering just how powerful he has become. As expected, Seiya uses Maximum Inferno to get rid of the body, but in the process, ends up destroying the church as well. Mash and Ilyalu are impressed by Seiya's strength. They introduce themselves. But to their surprise, Seiya uses the holy water on them. Even at Rista. Seiya, after scanning their stats, with a disgusted face tells Rista he doesn't need them. Because with their given stats, they will only slow him down. Just then, the knights arrive after hearing the explosion. On seeing the hero and goddess, they share how a horde of 10,000 undead is approaching this town. With an army of 300, they would not be able to take the horde down, and requests the hero to help them. Seiya asks what is the reward he will be getting. On knowing it's 1,000 gold coins, Seiya agrees and hands him a piece of paper to write it down as proof. With it, Seiya is ready to face the horde by himself. The knights are in disbelief to know it. They request him to wait because soon more knights will join him. But Seiya doesn't need people who will slow him. 
so he tells the knights along with Mash and Alullu to protect the town. With his flight skill, he flies toward the horde leaving Rista behind as well. Rista is devastated. She uses her godly powers to summon her wings. With it, she chases Saya. But even with her powers, Saya is too fast. Seeing she is not able to keep up, Saya returns and holds her hand. Rista starts blushing, thinking Saya has finally fallen for her. Using this chance she tries to kiss him. However, Saya speeds up and leaves Rista in shambles. When they reach the location, Saya uses his newly acquired skill, Meteor Strike. With just one hit he vaporizes all 10,000 undead. Rista is impressed to see how powerful Saya has become. Saya again uses Meteor Strike just to make sure the horde is gone for good. After his second spell, he holds his head because a large portion of his MP was used. Witnessing how powerful the spell was, Rista is worried for Saya. She asks how much magic power is now left. While holding his head, Saya replies out of 15,000 only 13,500 is left. After hearing this, Rista is just speechless. They return to the town. There, Ilyula comes in with worry and shares that since the church incident, she hasn't seen Mash. Rista with Ilyula goes to Saya's room for help. There Saya shows Rista a platinum sword he has created with his new skill, Synthesize. Rista is amazed to see it. She asks how he did it. Saya explains by combining two ordinary swords and Rista's hair he was able to do it. Just then a parcel arrives. Suspecting it might be a bomb, Saya tells Rista to open it. Inside the parcel, there is a mirror. But they soon realize it's not an ordinary one. Inside the mirror, Mash is tied up and is being tortured. Finally, the second heavenly king, Death Magia, appears. He is angry at Saya for killing his undead which he considered his children. And now to avenge their death he is going to torture Mash to death. And through this mirror, he will communicate the pain he had to go through. Death Magia is in an unknown place, and it would take a lot of time to find it. Saya tells Rista to open a portal to Divine Realm, and uses Dimension Blade to cut Death Magia's hand. Because time flows 100 times slower in the Divine Realm, Saya uses this opportunity to go to Ishtar and asks her to teleport him to the location where the Death Magia is. Obviously, Ishtar refuses as it's against the rule. But she shares the location where Mash is. Rista immediately opens the portal to the castle and goes there. As soon as they arrive, Saya with his leveled up stats, easily defeats Death Magia and saves Mash. After Mash wakes up from his injury, Ilyulu is very happy. Saya enters the room. He tells Mash and Ilyulu that they can join him but in return, they will carry his belongings. Both of them are very happy. Upon remembering about a legendary weapon, Mash and Ilyulu share that according to legends, a hero alongside two children of dragon will come to the dragon's Denver. There, the hero will receive the mightiest weapon to defeat the demon lord. Saya likes the idea but before that, he goes to the divine realm to increase his level. There he looks for Circeus and finds him cooking in the cafeteria. Circeus hides when he sees Saya approaching him. But unknowing it's Mash he has to train, Circeus with excitement goes to the training. After Mash, Rista hands over Ilyulu to the goddess of fire, Hestiaka and requests her to teach Ilyulu flame magic. After Ilyulu, it's Saya who wants to find someone to train with. On the way, Rista accidentally bumps into the goddess of destruction, Valkyrie. Valkyrie gets angry. With a furious tone, she tells Rista to watch her steps. After Valkyrie leaves, Saya asks Rista about Valkyrie because he sensed tremendous power from her. Rista shares in terms of pure strength, Valkyries is the strongest god. But because Valkyrie is short-tempered, Rista warns Saya to not talk to her, as she doesn't like a human talking to a god. But to her surprise, Saya already left and asks Valkyrie to train him by calling her an exhibitionist. Valkyrie is furious and is ready to kill Saya but just then, Arya comes. With her persuasion, Valkyrie stops and leaves. In a casual tone, Arya tells Saya that she has told him numerous times to not be this reckless. Saya finds it weird and asks Arya if she talks casually with everyone, or if it's just him. Arya apologizes for it. 
Knowing Seiya needs someone to train with, she introduces him to the goddess of war, Adonila. With her being way stronger than Circeus, Arya promises Seiya that he will improve a lot. Adonila with a creepy tone expresses how much glad she is to be able to help a human. For two days, they all work hard to improve their level. On the third day, it's time for their departure to Gabranda. Rista first goes to pick up Mash. On seeing the progress, she is amazed. From there she goes to pick up Ilyalu. However, there isn't any progress at all. Hestiaka tells Rista that this girl has no talent for flame magic. And it's better she gives up on it. Being a descendant of a dragon and not being able to use flame magic, Ilyalu is very sad. Rista gives her encouraging words and goes to pick up Seiya. There she sees, Adonila with a completely different look comes running towards Seiya and hugs him. She gives him a cake that she made and requests Seiya that she wants to go with him and live with him forever. Rista is in shock. She wonders what these two were actually doing in the name of training. Seiya bluntly rejects the cake and tells Adonila that no way he will spend his entire life with her. As they are about to leave, Adonila in a rage starts destroying everything. Seiya ignores her. After saying his catchphrase, ready perfectly, they go inside the portal. After reaching Gabranda, they enter the dragon's den. There, a voice guides them to step into the magic circle after which they will be teleported to the dragon village. And there the hero will receive the mightiest weapon, Exasion. Seiya is suspicious, so he first put a lizard on the magic circle. After the voice confirms the teleportation of the lizard, with everyone he teleports to the dragon village. There, they meet Lagos who guides them to their leader, the great mother of dragons, Levi. Levi first transforms Mash into a dragonet to reveal his true powers, and tells him that with enough training he has the potential to become a dragon god. Seeing Mash's transformation, Ilyulu with excitement asks how she can transform too. Levi reveals that Ilyulu cannot transform. It's because she has a more important role to serve, and that's by sacrificing her life to become Exasion. Everyone is in shock to hear this. Rista asks if there is an alternative. But unfortunately, this is the only way to get the Exasion that will help the hero to defeat the Demon King. With the Demon King in control of 70% of this world, Levi tells them to abandon their emotions for the sake of this world. Because if they didn't, the remaining nations will be destroyed. Sad Ilyalu accepts her fate and agrees to be the sacrifice. There is some time for the ceremony to begin, so everyone is outside thinking if something could be done. Rista asks Seiya to do something about it, but Seiya with cold tone replies, what needs to be done is obvious. There is nothing for him to do. Ilyula hearing the response gets emotional. She was hoping the hero would do something, but if that's her fate she agrees. Just before the ritual, the dragons organize a feast for everyone. Two dragon kids offer the hero's party some cookies. Seiya is about to reject them but after Rista tells him that they are just kids, he eats it. After some time, Levi announces the commencement of the ritual. Ilyulu alongside two guards walks on the legendary path created by the first dragon emperor. As the legend goes, after Ilyulu reaches the end point, she will jump from there and soon will transform into Exasion. But before Ilyulu could reach the end, Seiya comes from behind and kicks the guards. Levi is in shock and demands the reason for such an intrusion. Seiya after deep thinking realizes that if Ilyula becomes a sword then there will be one less person to carry his bag. And as for not receiving Exasion, Seiya is suspicious that the weapon would even kill the demon lord. Suddenly Rista and Mash get paralyzed. Levi already knew this could happen so she poisoned them with the cookies. But on seeing Seiya unaffected, Levi is in surprise. She asks how this is possible when she saw him eating the cookies. It's because Seiya suspected the cookies might be poisoned so after pretending to eat he soon vomited. Levi had enough. She is furious and transforms into a dragon god. Her stats are insanely high, especially the defense. But to her surprise Seiya was already prepared. He takes out the dragon killer sword which he made by combining a platinum sword with Masha's and Rista's hair. Levi is in worry to see it. She activates the curse on the necklace Ilyalu is wearing. After three minutes, the time will end and Ilyalu will die. Rista is in worry. 
She asks what about the sacrifice. Levi explains that for the ritual, she only needs Ilyula's blood and flesh, irrespective of whether she is dead or alive. And because the only way to release the curse is by killing Levi, Saya quickly uses Phoenix Drive and deals a huge damage on her. But Levi in time unlocks the wall. With it, her defense is almost impenetrable. Saya takes out another dragon killer. He combines them with his skill, Eternal Sword which he learned from Adenila. But even with them, Levi's HP is barely reducing. Levi is confident that with this Ilyalu will die and transform into Exasion. But to her surprise, Saya's plan wasn't to break her wall. It was to push her to the edge of the cliff. As Levi realizes Saya's plan, she undoes the wall. But as soon as she does it, Saya uses Double Wind Blade to destroy Levi's wings and push her through the cliff. And soon after, Levi turns into Exasion. Because the conditions of a female dragon's flesh and blood met, which Levi already possessed. Saya tells the villagers that it is a win-win situation for both of us. As he saved Ilyalu and they completed the ritual, the villagers are in a bit of shock as their leader has just passed away, but agree that it was for the best. Mash tightly hugs Ilyalu as he reunites with her. After teleporting, Rista tells Saya that she knows the sword is not Exasion as she can sense from its lack of sacred energy. Saya tells her that it was the best possible way to escape from there. Rista is glad to see Ilyula wasn't sacrificed, but asks Saya how he is planning to defeat the Demon King without Exasion. Saya doesn't know that, but he is sure along the way he will find something. Rista is surprised to hear such a response from a cautious person like Saya. As they are about to leave the cave, the knights from before are standing in front of the entrance. They are Rose Guard Imperial Knights. Their captain, Rosalie, is fighting against the demons. And they are here to request the hero to help them. Saya with Rista, Mash, and Ilyula goes to the place where the captain is fighting. There they see the demon in charge is Beelbub, who has incredible speed. Saya witnesses how patientless the captain is. Without any strategy, she is just charging them and as a consequence, the soldiers are being slaughtered. After watching for some more time, they go to the captain. Rosalie seeing the heroes have arrived immediately orders her guards to attack the demons and avenge her soldiers' deaths. However, Carlos suggests first to retreat and give some rest to the soldiers. Rosalie agrees. Everyone gathers for the meeting in the fortress. Rosalie with confidence declares that there is no need for any strategy because she and the hero would be sufficient. Saya stands up and announces he is leaving for the Divine Realm for his training. Everyone is in shock. Rosalie is furious because she wants to attack as soon as possible. But Saya shuts her up by telling her after he carefully observed her lack of patience, he cannot depend on someone like her. Rosalie is devastated to know the hero was already there when her soldiers were being slaughtered. She is furious and blames their death on him. She asks how a hero can see humans getting killed and not even lift a finger to help them. Saya bluntly clarifies that it's her lack of strategy that killed her soldiers. It's actually her who killed them. Rosalie is not ready to accept such an accusation. She is angry and tries to slap Saya. However, Saya blocks it and slaps her back multiple times until she stops. Rosalie with swollen cheeks cries and tells Saya she doesn't need his help and will attack the demon by herself. Saya doesn't pay attention to her and goes back to the divine realm. There, Saya is introduced to the goddess of archery, Midas. After seeing her ability to shoot seven continuous arrows, Saya is impressed and asks her to train him. Midas agrees but before they start the training, she suggests Saya to keep his expectations low because a human can only shoot three continuous arrows. Saya with a confident tone replies he'll see about that. While Saya is busy with Midas, Rista takes Masha and Ilyalu to Arya, who will train them and help improve their level. After dropping them off, Circeus comes in with worry and alerts Rista about Adenila going berserk since they left. Rista immediately goes to Adenila's place to calm her down. But there she sees the whole wall painted with one word, and that's kill. As Rista turns, Adenila is behind her waiting to kill Saya. Rista lies about leaving Saya in Gabranda. Fortunately, Adenila buys it. 
Rista quickly goes to Saya to warn him to stay away from Adanila. But Saya is confused because Adanila is standing right behind her. Adanila laughs. She knew there is no way Rista would come back without Saya and that's why followed her. Adanila remembering her humiliation gets into a fighting stance. But to her surprise, Saya approaches her and tells her to comb her hair as it looks messy. Rista in panic urges Saya to flee. However, Adanila, who was furious just moments ago, forgives Saya. Rista is in disbelief to see it was this easy to calm down the goddess of war. A few days later, Rista goes to Arya to check Mash and Ilyula's progress. Mash is partially able to release his dragon seal. And Ilyulu has learned support magic. With it, she can use delay and haste on the subject. From there they meet with Saya, and after he says his catchphrase, they teleport to the fortress. After knowing Rosalie has gone to fight Beelbub, Saya without any delay goes there. Upon arriving, they see Rosalie climbing up the tree. Saya is glad to see her in that position because now he can use Rosalie as bait. However, Beelbub is alerted and takes Rosalie with him. Saya sends Rista to make sure she doesn't lose sight of Rosalie. Seeing a goddess here, Beelbub understands the hero is also near. So to have an advantage he flies even higher. However, a shining arrow comes towards him. When Beelbub tries to dodge it, he drops Rosalie. And luckily Rista manages to catch her. Beelbub isn't surprised to see the hero is able to shoot this far from the ground. Soon, another seven shining arrows are fired at Beelbub. Rista is amazed to see a human is breaking limits set by God. However, Beelbub manages to dodge all of them. After it, he goes to find Saya so he can kill him. But to his surprise, the arrows Saya earlier fired transforms into birds. The arrows return with incredible speed and kill Beelbub. Saya, with the help of Ilyula's haste, finishes off the smaller flies and afterwards tells Mash to collect the bodies. Once they are collected, Saya uses Hell's fire to vaporize the remains. Before Rosalie leaves, she tells Saya about the legendary armor waiting for the hero in the village of Isale. With its help, he can defeat the demon lord. After knowing it, Saya with others goes to the village. But upon arriving they are in shock to witness the situation. The whole village is lit up in fire. As they go further inside, they meet Kiklapul, one of the four heavenly kings. Alongside him is a demon called Adamantos which Kiklapul summoned from another world. And using it, he has destroyed the legendary armor. And now with no legendary armor and sword, Saya's chance of defeating the demon king is very less. Kiklapul knows that he is not strong enough to defeat the hero, so he sacrifices himself and summons a hyper-conceptual reaper, Kroos Thanatus. Saya is not prepared for what is about to come, so he tells Rista to open the portal quickly. Soon the summoning completes and Kroos Thanatus is summoned. Rista looks at the stats and is freaking out to see they are glitching. This means Thanatus's stats are actually over the edge. Saya uses Double Wind Blade to attack the Reaper. However, the Reaper splits into two. Saya is in panic. He uses Maximum Inferno and tells Rista to quickly open the portal. Rista opens the portal and they go to the Divine Realm. However, the Reaper starts to break through the dimensions and enter Divine Realm. Rista is in disbelief to see how this is even possible. Saya is completely out of options and doesn't know how to counter it. To stop the intruder, gods come to the rescue. However, the reaper easily defeats them. Seeing Saya is already running, Rista and the others start running too. More gods come to help but they are no match. Adanila is in front, so Saya asks her for help. Since she is a goddess of war, Rista believes Adanila can defeat the reaper. Adanila uses ultimate eternal sword, but the reaper splits into multiple clones and in the end, Adanila also loses. Since almost every god has been defeated, Saya's last option is Valkyrie. He lures the reaper toward her and makes him attack Valkyrie's painting. Valkyrie is furious. She attacks the reaper, however, with his insane regeneration Valkyrie's attacks are ineffective. Valkyrie starts laughing. She asks Ishtar to release her limit. And after they are released, Valkyrie's stats are out of this world. She uses her ultimate skill, Valhalla Gate. 
With this, the reaper is caught inside the gate and is swallowed. But as a side effect of using it, Valkyrie starts to lose a lot of blood. Because in exchange for using it, the Valhalla gate demands the caster's life force. But because Valkyrie is immortal, this side effect doesn't affect her and instead tickles her. Seiya requests Valkyrie to teach him this skill. But due to its side effect, Valkyrie refuses because a human couldn't possibly learn it. Seiya still insists. Finally, Valkyrie agrees and tells him to come to her room after 10 minutes. With Seiya's training partner being decided, Mash and Ilya go to Arya to improve their stats. Meanwhile, Rista is called up by Ishtar because the last heavenly king is preparing to attack Gabranda. And that's why she and the hero must hurry. First, Rista brings Mash and Ilyalu who have improved significantly. And then she goes to Valkyrie's place to bring Seiya. However, she is stunned to witness Valkyrie on top of Seiya. Rista starts crying. Seiya assures her that it is not what she is thinking. He had to do it because it was a part of the final training. Rista loses her mind and shows a doll she has made out of her hair. Because Seiya needs a lot of her hair for synthesis, this would help him. Everyone is in disgust to see it. With Seiya learning Valhalla Gate, they go to Gabranda. Upon arriving, a huge horde of demons is in front of the castle. The last heavenly king, Eraser demands the mightiest warrior to come ahead. Upon hearing the demand, the king comes forward. Eraser seeing it's just a weak old man, along with other demons starts laughing. But to his surprise, the king instantly slashes him into pieces. And afterward, using his skill Massive Saint's Light, he vaporizes every remaining demon. Seeing how powerful he is, Rista asks the king the reason he doesn't defeat the demon lord himself. Before he could say anything, the king turns into a baby. Soon, Rosalie arrives and reveals her father is cursed by demon lord, which forces him to switch between old and infant. Rosalie takes the king to the castle, while the hero party buys some equipment. In the evening, Seiya is called up by the king. But before he meets him, Rosalie requests Seiya to not accept her father's request in joining him in fighting the demon lord. Because he has very less time to live, and she wants her father to live his last few days in peace. Seiya agrees, because even though the king is strong, he doesn't want someone in his team who could die any minute. Seiya goes to meet the king, but just then, a guard notifies the king that survivors from the demon lord's army are attacking the capital. The king tries to go, but Seiya stops him and insists that he will go and wipe them out. The king agrees, Seiya takes Mash and Ilyalu with him and tells Rista to stay here because she is useless. Later, the king and Rista have some private talk. He asks Rista if she knows the reason why gods and heroes even after dying in this world can still get back to their original world. Rista isn't aware of it and asks the king. The king explains that a god has two souls. One is called the virtual soul which he or she carries where they go and the other one is the real soul which is kept safe in the divine realm. And same is with the hero. Because his real soul lives in his world, so even if he dies here, he will go back to his world. The king then tells about a magical item called Chain Destruction. If used, both the heroes and the goddesses virtual as well as their real souls will be destroyed forever. Rista is terrified to know that a magical item like this even exists. The king proceeds to reveal that the demon lord possesses it and has already produced a weapon out of it, which is known as God Eater. The king then takes the weapon out and shows it. Rista is in worry. She asks why he possesses such a thing. The king suddenly attacks Rista and traps her. While tied up, Rista demands the reason he is doing this. The king explains, after standing in front of the demon lord he was stunned to see the difference in their power levels. He was so overwhelmed that he pledged to worship him from that day. Before the king can kill Rista, in a nick of time Seiya comes and saves her. He was cautious enough and knew this could be a possibility. Rosalie is in shock to witness her father trying to kill a goddess. The king uses demon spirit orb, and by using it he attains the power he had when he was in his prime. As they start to fight, Seiya uses the ultimate eternal sword attack. However, the king uses a custom to adapt to the attack and easily throws away one of Seiya's swords. 
With no other options left, Seiya starts to remove all the heavy accessories he was wearing. Seiya was planning to remove them when he had to fight against the Demon Lord, but looking at the king's strength, he doesn't have any choice. However, even with Seiya's speed being doubled, he is not able to defeat him. Rista asks Ilyalu to use haste on Seiya. But to her surprise, Ilyalu had already cast the spell. It is at this moment, Rista realizes that Seiya didn't said his catchphrase before coming here. The king cuts Seiya's right arm. Thinking he is going to win, he starts to laugh. But to his surprise, he loses his arm also. Asking how is this even possible? Seiya explains, by using counter break he learned from Valkyrie, he can return the exact damage he has received. Using Phoenix Thrust Seiya finishes off the king. Rista immediately starts healing Seiya's arm. After the king turns back to his older version, he starts crying. Seiya tells Rista to heal the king's wound as well. Before the king dies, Seiya advises Rosalie to talk to her father for the last time. But Rosalie refuses. She will not forgive a traitor. Seiya slaps her and reminds her that it's her last chance. No matter how evil he is, he still loves her. Rosalie gets emotional and tightly hugs her father for the very last time. Three days later, the king's demise is announced to the public and Rosalie is throned as the new ruler. Back in town, Seiya wakes up after a long sleep. Seeing he barely defeated the king, he wants to train more and level up quickly. But before he does, Seiya tells everyone to go and explore the town, while he looks for some herbs. And later at night they can have some fun. Everyone is happy to see a training freak is allowing them to enjoy themselves. Just like planned, the three of them go to the town. Because there is a mixed hot spring nearby, Rista is having nosebleeds just upon thinking she will be able to show off her melons to Seiya. However, upon looking at the swimsuits, she criticizes how lame they are. The shopkeeper hears it and is now pissed. She starts teasing Rista by suggesting her to wear a single-breasted bathing suit or even a topless one. But to her surprise, Rista buys them. Rista is so impressed with them that she even buys an underwear with a hole in it. The shopkeeper is just speechless. In the evening, when they return to the inn, they notice Seiya hasn't come back. Thinking he might still be shopping for equipment, they go to the town to find him. But even after searching for an hour, they are unable to find him. Rista is in worry. As the last option, she goes to the Divine Realm to ask Ishtar about Seiya. When she arrives, she sees Arya crying by the window. After wiping off her tears, Arya guides them to a secret place where all of God's souls are kept safe. There, Ishtar reveals that Seiya has gone to fight the demon lord by himself. Rista is in disbelief because a cautious personality like Seiya will never do it. Ishtar explains further that since the beginning, Seiya has always tried to protect his teammates. And even when he could have died for real against the king, he fought him to protect Rista. Ishtar shows that Seiya has already achieved his maximum stats from the time they went to the dragon village. Because of his extremely fake skill, Rista wasn't able to see them. And with no other way to increase his stats, Seiya learned Valhalla Gate so he can fight the demon lord by himself. Rista is in shock. Because if a human uses the Valhalla Gate then in the presence of chain destruction, Seiya is bound to die. Ishtar shows them a level B world, Exphoria which was destroyed 100 years ago. It was the world that was given to Arya. And to protect it, Arya summons Seiya as her hero. On the way, they formed a party with Colt and Tiana, who were inhabitants of Exphoria. However, unlike the present, at that time Seiya was an impatient hero who didn't even strategize and solely relied on his and his party's strength. Fortunately, after barely managing to defeat their enemies, they were able to reach the Demon Lord. At night, the day before they were planning to attack, Tiana requested Seiya to first gather information about the Demon Lord. But Seiya being an impatient hero assured her everything is going to be fine. On the day of the fight, Seiya was able to kill the Demon Lord. Thinking they have saved the world, everyone started to celebrate. But to their surprise, the Demon Lord was reborn. Without wasting any time he first ate Colt, and then Arya. The reason Demon Lord was able to reborn was because he had two lives. After the Demon Lord caught Tiana, 
He noticed that she is pregnant with the hero's child. Saya cried and begged the demon lord to spare their lives. But no matter what, the demon lord mercilessly killed everyone. Back in the present, after seeing the truth, Rista is emotional. Ishtar reveals that after Tiana died, she was reincarnated as Rista. And even though, Saya has no memories of them being together. His regrets are deeply embedded in his soul and that is why in his current life, he tries to be as cautious as possible. Rista wipes off her tears and together with Ilyalu and Mash goes to help Saya. By the time they reach the castle, Saya and the demon lord are already fighting. Rista gets chills as she can feel the presence of chain destruction. Saya calls Valhalla Gate and swallows up the demon lord. However, the demon lord transforms and tries to escape through the gate. Saya synthesizes a sword made from the gate's spike and attacks the demon lord with it. Finally, the demon lord is completely swallowed up. But as compensation, Saya's body starts to lose a lot of blood. Rista asks Ishtar to release all her divine powers. Ishtar warns Rista that she has already broken the rule by directly teleporting to the demon lord's castle. And by asking to release her limit, her status as a goddess will be taken. Rista agrees to accept any punishment and receives all her divine powers. With the help of it, she successfully heals Saya's wounds. However, the Valhalla Gate hasn't vanished yet. The Demon Lord breaks it and uses Judgment Zero. Rista is terrified to see how immense the power is. But before the Demon Lord releases his attack, Saya uses another Valhalla Gate. This time, the gate is bigger and it swallows the Demon Lord along with the first gate. But as a cost, this time Saya's body starts to break. Rista tries her best to heal him, but Saya's body is breaking faster than she can heal him. Saya knows his death is inevitable, so he thanks Mash and Ilyula for supporting him. And just before he completely vanishes, Saya hugs Rista. Upon seeing Tiana's reflection, he remembers his previous life and is glad to see this time he was able to save her. With the Demon Lord being dead, the world is now at peace. Mash and Ilyalu are working for Rosalie. After bidding them goodbye, Rista goes back to the Divine Realm. Rista starts to hallucinate. She checks the room where Saya used to train, but he is not there. Arya enters the room. Ishtar has called up Rista, so she is here to take her. After combing Rista's hair, Arya takes her to Ishtar. Firstly, Ishtar congratulates Rista for saving Gabranda. But because she broke a rule, Rista will receive a punishment. And now, she must save an SS-class world, Exforia which is already under the control of the Demon Lord. And if she fails to save it, she will be removed from her goddess status. Arya is emotional. She begs Ishtar to not give such a cruel punishment. Even for a great goddess, the SS-class world is too difficult and Rista being only a beginner goddess, it's impossible for her to save it with a normal hero. Ishtar reveals that after the second gate was summoned, alongside the demon lord and the first gate, the chain destruction was also swallowed. Ishtar hands a paper containing a potential hero. Rista on seeing Saya's name on it, starts crying. With the stats being reset to level 1, Ishtar permits Rista to summon the hero. However, Rista yet again ignored an important characteristic. And that's, this time, Saya's personality is, beyond impossibly cautious. If you enjoyed the recap, please consider liking and subscribing this channel. Have a wonderful day ahead.